Hey friends, um, two years ago this month was when I finished my treatment for uterus cancer. I had um, chemo and radiation. I lost all my hair. And um, two years ago, I, I finished with my last PET scan. And at the time it was, it was clear. So I'm on the five-year plan now where I go in every three months for my labs to make sure that the cancer hasn't grown back. And I just kind of wanted to give a little recap of what life has meant to be, meant to me since cancer. Um, I know that it's going to sound really weird. It's going to sound just like, what? Especially those of you who have lost family members to cancer. But for me personally, um, my, my recovery, my journey during cancer was probably one of the best things that's ever happened to me. And here's why. You know, from the very beginning, I never took on cancer as the enemy. I never thought about cancer as, I'm going to kick its ass. Cancer sucks. I hate it. And I did that because cancer was a part of me. So if I, if I hate on a part of me, that's not going to help my body to get rid of it. So what I did was I focused on all the healthy cells. I focused on all the organs that were not affected and were healthy and strong. I focused on my muscles and tendons and ligaments and bones and my good healthy blood. And I literally just talked my way through every part of my body every day. Thank you so much legs for getting me around in my life. Thank you so much lungs that I could take in all of this fresh clean air. Thank you so much senses that I get to enjoy so much of this beautiful world. You know, I just went through everything and I just be, that just became my focus. When days of chemo came around, I, I looked forward to it because that was one more step closer to being whole and healthy. That was, I considered it a privilege to be able to be in a state that has wonderful medical care and I had a great medical team and I was able to have chemo. I was lucky enough to have that. A lot of people don't get that. And yeah, there were a lot of side effects and, you know, as a woman losing your hair, that's kind of, that's hard, but I always looked at it like I'm whole and healthy. I'm whole and healthy and you know what? Hair's gonna grow back and it's gonna be just fine. And you know, I'm happy to say like, this, this is my hair, this, and it's been cut, you know, but this, it does grow back and um, I remember I tried to look for the positives of no hair during that time. And I joke often, but it was kind of true. I could literally take a shower and be done, like just within a couple minutes, because I didn't have to shave anything. I didn't have to wash my head. You know, it was just kind of um, super simple. And, you know, I had my Tina. My Tina was my wig. Uh, I don't know why I named her Tina. Like it doesn't represent anything, but she was Tina to me and that just meant that you know every day I put my Tina on and I just I just showed up I just showed up and so having Tina before I lost my hair was such a big um, relief because I had my plan already in place I wasn't going to have to go in public when I wasn't ready without hair or in the stages of the hair falling out because um, it can be kind of embarrassing. Um, and I certainly applaud those that have alopecia or those that um, are going through treatment and they don't have a wig. There's nothing wrong with that. There are many times that I went without my wig. Um, but you know, I purposely didn't hardly tell anybody. There was very, very few people that knew. And I did that because I didn't want to be seen as sick. I didn't want to be seen as somebody that has cancer. I didn't want people to be like, oh my gosh, did you hear about Gretchen? Like she's dying. Um, or it got out of hand. Maybe the rumors, you know, like the whole the whole um, telephone, you know, that little game that you start, you whisper in somebody's ear and by the time it gets to the last person, it's completely different than what was there. And so I just didn't want to have that be the focus. I didn't want cancer to be the focus. I wanted to just go about life I never stopped working. I never stopped traveling. 
Um, I was on air for six months. Nobody ever knew. Nobody knew that it was me and Tina. Um, and so that was my way of dealing with it. And now that I get to share my story, I'm on a stage all over the world sharing my experience of how to allow the power of thought to work in your life. You don't have to have cancer to really tap into the power of thought. And what I mean by that, that's the power of you speaking to yourself. And really when you're speaking to yourself in a positive way, it is a form of prayer. And so you're actually becoming in alignment with your higher being, whatever you wanna call it. So when you are giving gratitude, when you are saying thank you, when you are praising the parts of your body or the parts of your life that are going well, and you leave out the parts that aren't going so well, you're actually bringing good energy to you. You're actually bringing your prayers to come to a realization. Um, I like this analogy, you know, the, the emoji of the praying hands. Well, think about it this way. This part is God and this part is you. And when you're in alignment with, with Him, that's when things start to shift. That's when things start to become really fun. And I know that um, looking back, you know, there were, I think, six times I was denied chemo because my white blood count wasn't where it could needed to be. Um, if I accepted chemo at the time, it could have killed me. So, uh, you know, prepping for chemo, getting yourself all emotionally ready, kind of getting my family. One of my kids would always take off work because it was like eight and a half hours to do my treatment at the hospital. And when, um, when we were turned away and we we're driving back home, it was like, okay, let's go get some ice cream or let's go have lunch. Or I just kind of took it as like, it's a free vacation day with me and whatever my, whichever one of my kids could come with me. So, you know, really the premise of what I'm trying to say y'all is you can find good. You can find good in any situation. You can find God. You can find the universe. You can find whatever brings you that peace. You can find it. It doesn't have to be found after it's all been taken care of. It doesn't have to be found after you get the results that you want or your dream job comes in or you find your soulmate or whatever. It, you don't have to wait till then to be happy. You can find happiness even in the moment when you think maybe it's really not there. It's always there. There's always something. There's always something. And I think now looking back two years ago, I was just starting my journey of helping people because I was just coming out that I had just finished my treatments and all of a sudden people from around the, around the world were just wanting some advice, wanting some help, wanting me to help them feel emotionally better. Um, and so that became like, that's my why. That's my why, you know. I've had several people tell me that I deserved cancer. Um, you know, you don't, you're not living your life right. You're not living your life good enough. So God has to give you a test and this is your punishment. And I always think to myself like, hmm, you don't know the same God that I know because that's not a punishing God. That's not a God that's full of love. That's not how we train and teach our children. We don't teach our kids that way. I'm gonna throw something on you that is so horrific that I just hope you learn a lesson. So I never, I never looked at it that way. And I just, to be honest, just block and delete those kind of people because they don't know. They don't know. I know. I know where I am now. I know what I have gone through and I know the person that wants to share my journey, my experience with those who may be going through cancer or maybe you're a caretaker of somebody with cancer or maybe you're just going through a really shitty time in your life. It doesn't matter. It's all the same principle. It's the same way of looking at the story how you want it to be. When you tell the story to yourself and to others the way you want it to be, you're actually training your subconscious mind to believe it. The Olympics are coming up. I think uh, opening ceremonies are this week. And you know, you think about these athletes, I can't even imagine the number of them that have closed their eyes 
and have rehearsed their sport over and over again in their mind to the part that when they actually get to the place, whether it's gymnastics or swimming or track and field, whatever it might be, their body is automatic. It's ready to go because they have trained their subconscious mind what to do, what to do. It's the same way with anything in our life. You want that dream job? Start visualizing it. Start imagining it. Start putting yourself into the feelings of having it. Start seeing it. Start writing about it. Start scripting about it. Start telling yourself over and over and over 500 times a day, I am whatever it is. I am whatever it is. Say it. Keep saying it, train your subconscious mind, train your body to follow suit, to believe in what it is, and it'll just come. It has to, it's law, it's called law of attraction. And what you resist, you will persist. So don't go down that road, don't resist it. Find the good in everything in your life. There's always more good than there is bad, I promise you that, promise you that. I can can say that because I've been there. Even at times that I was thrown up in the middle of the night and crying in my bed because I didn't want my kids to hear me in my pain, I still found the good. I still found the good. I still found the good, and I gave myself that much time to feel sorry for myself, and that was it. still found the good. It is my hope, it is my prayer, it is my wish and my dream that you will take just a small part of maybe something I've said, and it will resonate with you, and it will help you in your life. It will change your life will help you be a better, happier person. All said with love.